In many societies of the past, like the American Old West, violence was a part of daily life. Many citizens carried guns to protect themselves. Who has guns in today's society? Hunters and the army and just, I guess, regular people use guns. Gangsters have guns. Terrorists, military officials. Hunters have guns. Policemen. Actually, my English teacher has a gun. <laughs> Terrible people have guns. Murderers. People who hunt. Groups like the NRA. Police officers use guns to um, protect themselves and to protect others. The army has guns. There's a lot of guns in like the inner cities that they get because of like gang warfare and everything. Criminals use guns to rob people. Actually, I think a lot of people have uh, guns nowadays. In the 14th century, the bow is a decisive weapon. In the 15th century, the cannon's technology becomes small enough to fit into the palm of a hand and takes to the open field as a handgun. The sword is a symbol of warrior tradition that won't die, but the handgun revolutionizes warfare. European armies triumph through the use of gunpowder. August 26th, 1346. The English king, Edward III, draws up his weary army near the village of Crecy in northern France. The English are outnumbered, but they have faith. Faith in their firepower, faith in the longbow, Years of fighting the Scots and Welsh have taught Edward new tactics to exploit the longbow's potential. As day breaks at Crecy, Edward sets his defenses. He dug holes to trap the French cavalry. He studded his front line with stakes to injure enemy horses. But at the core of the English battle plan was one decisive weapon, the longbow. It was as tall as a man and made from the wood of the yew tree. It took a hundred pounds of force to draw it and it was deadly at 200 yards. While it took more strength to draw than the crossbow, it could be fired faster and farther. As the English archers prepared for battle, Edward arrived with his knights. But today at Crecy, the English cavalry would not fight on horseback. Edward dismounted his knights and stood them among his archers in a V-shaped formation known as the Harrow. The French were confident of victory. They outnumbered the English three to one. Against the English longbow, the French now deployed the crossbow. The French King Philip had hired 6,000 mercenaries from Genoa, Italy. These soldiers, who were expert crossbowmen, 
marched down the hill toward the English defenses. The chronicler of the time, Geoffrey Le Baker, described the scene. The first charge was made by the French against the English with resounding trumpets, drums and kettle drums with strident clarions. And with shouting almost like thunder, the crossbowmen of the French advanced. their quarrels reached the English. The English were out of range of the Genoese crossbows. But the Genoese were well within the reach of the English longbow. The English archers then advanced one step forward and shot their arrows with such force and quickness that it seemed as if it snowed. The Genoese threw down their weapons and fled. This disgusted the French king, so he ordered his mounted knights to attack. The French knights charged through the confused lines of retreating crossbowmen. The ground was soft after rain. Within seconds, the battle became a mess of chainmail, horses, and men all under the attack of English arrows. The French were in disarray. A few of their knights were driven into the English lines by the sheer driving force of their charge. They were beaten down with axes, lances and swords. And in the middle of the host, many Frenchmen were crushed to death without any wound, simply by the weight of numbers. After 16 fruitless charges, the French withdrew, utterly defeated. The English remained in battle formation throughout the night. At sunrise, Edward's messengers found 1,542 French lords and knights dead beside a large portion of the French army. The English losses, two knights and 80 men. The English victory at Crecy stunned people throughout Europe. They didn't expect the English to use the firepower of the longbow. A new day was dawning for the infantrymen. The horseman would have a place on the battlefield for centuries to come, but he would no longer dominate as he had for the last thousand years. The days of the mounted knight were over, but the whiz of English arrows was not the only sound of firepower at Crecy. Edward had brought to the battle a handful of bombards, early cannons that hurled stone balls. Loud and inaccurate, the bombard did little more than frighten the French horses. Yet it delivered the opening shot in a revolution that would transform war and civilization forever. <laughs> 